Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's video is not one that I planned on filming, but I thought it would be beneficial if I sat down and told you something very scary that I did experience this week. When I was talking about it on Instagram, a lot of people, and especially a lot of mouse owners, didn't actually know what this was, which I found quite surprising. So today's video was actually supposed to be me giving you a tour of the mouse's detolf, but I did have a little bit of an emergency situation that I had to deal with first which I thought it would be beneficial if I sat down and told you about this because it is winter outside, it is getting really cold in most countries so this is something that you may happen to come across and I'd hate for any of you guys to not know what to do in this situation so that's why I'm sharing this video with you today. So the mice are living in their detolf and I promise I will give you that video very very soon but I came in to feed them and when I put the food out for them I noticed that only Pebble and Opal came which was very very rare because Pearl is such an outgoing mouse She's always the first one to come if she hears me in the room, so this kind of set off alarm bells in my brain and I slowly overturned everything in the cage looking for her because I just got a bad feeling. Usually I wouldn't go looking for my mice, but I just had a really bad feeling that Pearl wasn't there and I didn't know where she was. So I did go looking, I took all the little houses and she was under none of them and there is a section in the detail which you will see that is a thick layer of hay and they've kind of made a little nest in here, even though I've given them plenty of other places to sleep. They have hides that are like packed full of tissue paper. They decided to sleep in this little nest of hay that they've made. So I did carefully lift up some of the hay and Pearl was lying there and immediately this just didn't feel right to me. So when I found her, she was lying on her side and my heart immediately sunk, but she was breathing so I did pick her up and as soon as she was in my hand, she was literally ice cold. Her tail, which is where mice lose most of their body heat from, was very, very cold. Her feet and just her overall body, even her fur, was very, very cold. So luckily, immediately, straight away, I knew what this was. And this is something called torpor. So torpor is a hibernation-like state that mice and other small rodents, such as hamsters, sometimes enter. If they get too cold, if they don't have access to water, or sometimes if they get very stressed, they can enter this hibernation-like state. And this is basically just when their body starts to shut down, their metabolism slows, their heart rate slows, and they do appear to be very dead when you first find them because they're very still and very cold, but they are still alive at this point and you can bring them back from this. Now unfortunately, if you don't recognize the signs quick enough or you don't act quick enough, then your small rodents can unfortunately pass away because of this. So it is really important to keep an eye on them during the colder months to make sure that they aren't entering torpor, and if they are, to act quick enough to bring them back from it. So luckily I did catch this quite early on, I had seen Pearl running around about two hours before I actually found her in the state so I did have time on my side and luckily I also knew what this was. I did know about torpor in hamsters and mice so I kind of recognised that's what it was straight away and I was able to help her. So I will be talking to you guys through what I personally did to help in this situation. Other people may have different methods but this is what worked for me. I also will be including clips of Pearl here just to show you guys what she did look like in this state that you can hopefully recognise it in your mice if it ever does happen. Fingers crossed this never happens to you and you never have to experience this, but just in case you do, I'm going to put clips here so you can kind of compare to what she looked like when she was entering torpor. So as soon as I found her, I scooped her up and I knew that I needed to raise her body temperatures. So the first thing I did was put her under my shirt against my own body warmth to try and increase her body temperature. My boyfriend was also in the room with me at the time, so I started explaining to him what this was and what we needed to do to help her. So I do also have my leaf insects on a heat mat down there. So whilst he was going and heating up the hot water bottle, I just placed her down on this heat mat and she really was not in a good state at this point. She was not very responsive. I could see that she was kind of going in and out of consciousness. I would hold her and she was just completely like a rag doll and floppy. She wasn't responding to me touching her at all. Her eyes were completely shut. She was very, very cold and it's very unresponsive. So I put her on that heat mat that my leaf insect eggs are on temporarily whilst my boyfriend ran and got a hot water bottle. Something that was a good sign at this point is we were offering her food just to see if she would be responsive to it and she did still have an appetite at this point. We gave her a massive bit of millet to see if she wanted to eat that and she was eating it. She had her eyes shut still so she was really slowly like picking at this millet but it was a good sign that she did still have her appetite. We just needed to work on raising her body temperature. So my boyfriend did come back with the hot water bottle and one of our blankets and it's really important not to put too hot water in there, although it may be tempting to try and warm them up as quickly as you can. You want to do it gradually because you can shock their systems. If they're really cold you don't want to be making them too hot because this can just have a really bad effect. So we did mix the hot water with a bit of cold water to make it just a bit more than our natural body temperatures 
and then we also had the blanket to kind of insulate her and we wrapped her up in this and she did look really cute but at this point she was still very unresponsive. So while she was wrapped up in this blanket, I was also rubbing her really gently. This was just to increase the blood flow around her whole entire body. It's really important to help get their blood circulating again because the heart rate does decrease when they are entering torpor. This is just a really important thing to do to make sure the blood's all circulating and flowing as it should. So something else that is really important to try and do when they are in this state is to try and get them hydrated again. Now they may be too weak to willingly drink on their own, so you may have to force fluids into them. I always keep syringes on hand, you can get these from your vets. If you go in and ask them to give you some syringes, then they probably will just give them to you. And make sure you get really, really small ones because obviously mice have really small mouths. So it was at this point that I reached out to one of my friends who is an Australian mouse breeder. Her Instagram is Saves on Mouse Street, I'll leave a link in the description. Also leave a link to her Tumblr care page where she talks about Torpor at the bottom. And her help has been really valuable during this time because even though I recognised this as Torpor and kind of knew what to do, I needed the link to her um, Tumblr page for the kind of ingredients to the water that I needed to be force feeding her. And I have it here. So the first important thing is to never force your mouse to have cold water. This will obviously decrease their body temperature. You want to be giving them warm water. And in that warm water, you also want to put one tablespoon of salt and one tablespoon of sugar. And then just dissolve this in a cup of water. And then use a syringe to kind of force this into your mouse to get them hydrated and give them fluids. So for about an hour, I did have Pearl on my lap on heat source. And I was just alternating between giving her fluids and rubbing her to get her circulation going and also offering her any foods that she was taking. She did have a yoghurt drop and she was eating it really, really slowly. It was quite painful to watch how slowly she was actually eating it, but she did gradually start improving and her appetite came back. And I was also giving her mealwormers because they are high in protein. You wanna to aim to give them foods that are high in protein just to give them that little extra boost. So dog food and mealworms are really great things to give them afterwards as well, after they've gone through this, but she was taking mealworms like a pro, so I just kept giving her mealworms. And you could gradually see her energy start to come back. Her eyes started to open more, which was a good sign. And after about an hour, she was completely back to normal. She was running around on the blanket that I had on my lap. And I just put her back into the cage. Now this is also a really important part. I kind of surveyed the cage and realized that they were sleeping in this hay nest, which was not enough insulation for them. So I added a lot more of the shredded tissue paper I have into that nest just in case I needed it. And then it also moved a couple of other things around to try and entice them to sleep in there as well. They have like a pink hammock thing. Um, they seem to favour that quite a lot. So I stuffed this full of paper bedding. And that's where they've been sleeping since. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I've avoided this from happening again. I've also turned the heating up a little bit more in my house. Just to help because the temperatures have dropped outside quite a bit. Um, so yeah, she's completely back to normal now. She's staring at me right now. I'll get her out in a minute so that you guys can see her. But I just wanted to share my experience with you guys, especially if you have any small rodents such as hamsters or mice. I never thought this was something that I would personally experience, but I did this week and I just wanted to share it with you just to educate you on what torpor actually is. It's really important to be aware of it, know how to deal with it and know how to prevent it from happening. Fingers crossed it doesn't happen again because I have added a lot more bedding in there and my house is now generally a lot more warmer. So hopefully it never happens to any of you guys either. But if it does, fingers crossed you are a lot more prepared for it now, in the event that it does happen. Now I did also get some questions about whether this is something you should worry about if you have rats. Now rats are much larger mammals than mice and hamsters, so they really don't feel the cold as much as they do. So this is not really something you have to worry about if you have rats or larger mammals such as guinea pigs and things like that. It's mostly to do with very, very small animals. I know dwarf hamsters also are quite susceptible to it, so if you have anything like that, then that's when you really need to worry and just keep an eye on them when the temperatures drop. Pearl is staring at me because she wants to come out, so I'm just going to quickly get her and show you two guys, and you can see what a difference there is between yesterday when she was like this at night time and compared to now. Here she is, as you can see, she's very, very active compared to how she was yesterday. I think her main problem is because she is a little bit smaller than the other two, she spends all of her time running around, she's very very energetic. She burns her energy a lot quicker and the other two are a little bit fatter than her so she does feel the cold a lot more even though she's very very fluffy. Don't let that deceive you, she does feel the cold and hopefully we never have to experience anything like this again because I love her and I hated seeing her in that state but hopefully she's going to be completely fine now. So yeah guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new that you didn't know before and hopefully you feel much more prepared if you have any small animals to know what to do in this situation. 
Don't forget to subscribe to see any more future animal related videos from us, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! Say bye, pal!